Hey guys, what is up? This is Janssen. Welcome to another video. Now, today we have a really interesting concept to talk about because I'm going to explain you exactly how to think like an engineer. Now, I am an engineer. I have been studying engineering for like nine years now. I'm about to finish my PhD in engineering. And in my opinion, the engineering design process and thought process is the best way by far in order to solve a problem you're facing, no matter what it is that you're doing, right? If you run a business, if you have a personal problem, if you have a dating problem, no matter what your problem really is, if you start thinking like an engineer, not only you're going to solve the problem, but you're going to solve the problem in the most efficient way in terms of money, in terms of time, and in terms of effort. So, um, yeah, I'm going to explain to you all the steps uh, and I'm going to give you some practical examples in our daily life to see how you can take the same way that an engineer would use to solve a problem in your business or your dating or personal life. So first thing first, the first step out of the eight steps of this engineering thought process is that you need to define the problem. And here's the thing. When we say define the problem, we mean define the real root problem that is causing the problems. Because many times we just focus on the surface, right? Oh, my problem with my business is not making money. Yes, mate. But the reason for not making money is not that you're not making money. The reason you're not making money is because there is an other problem in here deeper that is causing this. Maybe it's um, your marketing. Maybe it's your Facebook ads. Maybe it's uh, the people you hired. Maybe it's a thousand different things. So you need to define the problem and the root problem that is causing all the other problems. You get what I'm saying? Now, that's the first step. The second step is that you need to identify the constraints of that solution. In other words, words, you need to identify all the things that could happen, would happen, and will happen that could potentially stop you from solving the problem. So if you run a business and your problem is that you're not making enough money, you need to identify the constraints in thinking in terms of, okay, what are the resources that I need and I don't have? Okay, what are the things that I already have and could be a problem? Okay, what are the softwares that you might need? What, are the, what is the personnel that you might need to hire? What is um, the, the, you know, the pain points throughout your sales process that could cause a problem? What are all the time things that will be problem, the materialistic things that you miss, all of those kind of things that would stop you from solving problems. If it was a relationship, right, and the problem is that you don't have communication, identifying the constraints would be something like uh, that the temper of the other person, okay, so that you can't easily approach the other person to solve the problem because he has a weird temper and he might or she might get angry at you. So no matter how calm you go because he's angry and he has a temper, you might not be able to solve the solution because of his personality, right? You identify so you're aware of the different things that might stop you from solving the problem. So that we go to the third step, which is about basically brainstorming, okay, the different ways to solve the problem, okay? Brainstorm different solutions. And this is the most critical thing that people are missing because they just want the easy way out, right? They just want a fast, easy, effective, quote-unquote, way to solve the problem. But that's not the point, right? The point is to brainstorm and think of the different ways that you could solve the problem, right? So that after you have this, like, let's say, a list of 10, 100, 1,000 different ways to solve the problem, you just select the most effective in terms of time, in terms of cost, in terms of money, in terms of effort, right? And you choose the most easy solution, if you will. Because the engineer is not only the person who is going to be able to solve the problem, but it's basically the person who's going to solve the problem by saving time, money, and effort. So you need to do the same, especially if you have a business, right? You need to solve your business problem by finding the way that is going to be the most efficient for you in terms of money and time and cost, right? So otherwise you will have problems. So this is super important, select the most important. And then, okay, for engineers about prototyping, a prototype um, based on that solution, but for us it will be basically 
taking action upon that solution that you chose. And then it's just a repetition of testing and iterating and doing again, taking action again and again and again, failing again and again and again, and based on the feedback, receiving the feedback, putting that again into action, trying again and again until you find the best way, all right, to achieve the results you're after, all right? So basically it's all about after a while to uh, split test and try different things, right? If you're not sure which one of your two landing pages works the best, split test, try both read the numbers, see what is better than the other one and choose the one that is more effective. Same with uh, your personal relationships, right? If you want to find the girlfriend of your life and you want to approach women and flirt with women, well, guess what? You need to approach, get like, you know, uh, get rejected a lot of times so that you learn, okay, this is what I should do, this is what I shouldn't do. And based on that, you self correct yourself and you choose the solution. So, to conclude and give you this whole process into a few words. Number one, there's always a problem that you need to solve and you need to be aware of what the problem is. Number two, you need to be aware of all the things that might stop you from solving the problem. Number three, you need to brainstorm a lot on finding the different solutions. And then after you find the solutions to the, your problem, you need to choose one or maybe two or a few and test all of them and see which one of these is the most effective in terms of time, money, effort. And then it's all about testing, iterating, receiving feedback, trying again. Testing, iterating, receiving feedback, try again. Until you find this sweet spot, which will give you the less amount of pain, if you will, in order to get to the solution you're after. And then you basically solve the problem. So guys, that's exactly how an engineer thinks. That's exactly how you should start thinking in your life, in your business, in your personal life to solve your problems. Um, let me know in the comments below what do you think was the biggest takeaway you took from this video. And also, don't forget to subscribe, smash the like button, and turn notifications on. I appreciate you for watching this video, and I'll see you very, very soon for another one. All right? Have a good one. Cheers.